What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, you sent me the article. I couldn't read past the second paragraph. <laughs> I stopped after spectacle. If you don't mind, please, reading that article so that we can really dive deep into what we're about to say. So, what has Pablo <laughs> on edge and us irate? Uh, we haven't had a lot of news about Spider-Man 4. We had a lot of Spider-Man-ish stuff from Sony's 900 characters, but not a lot about the Tom Holland sequel. Maybe there's a reason for that. Dark Horizons reporting um, that Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures are at odds reportedly, over the direction and the storyline they want to take with Spider-Man 4. The report says Marvel Studios' Kevin Feige and Tom Holland, quote, allegedly want more of a grounded story for the next film after the multiverse shenanigans, quote, of Spider-Man No Way Home. Pause. Does that sound reasonable, people? What Kevin and Tom Holland want? A more grounded story that perhaps may involve other characters like Daredevil, who knows, but a more grounded, not, not some crazy, go ahead, continue. So, well, my, my response to that is, did any, I mean, there's $2 billion of global box office that saw how the movie ended. How did the movie end, people? Where did they leave our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? They took it back to his roots, literally, yeah. with his homemade suit and everyone, everyone's memory wiped. Sounds like a reset to me. Also added on the Marvel side of things, they would like to and have had discussions about bringing in Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin to be part of the story they want to tell. So there's that, which is where Pablo is getting the Daredevil connection from. And we obviously we saw... Charlie Cox in No Way Home with a cameo. Quote, however, they say that Sony Pictures wants to take the opposite approach and wants to bring back Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield again for a much bigger multiverse spectacle. End quote. I stopped right there. Because, Brian, oh my goodness. If it were me, if I was Kevin Feige, I wouldn't go back and forth with this. I'd be like, you know what? Do what you want. Tom Holland, I'm sorry. You're my boy. But I gotta, I, I, it's out of my hands. In the meantime, Kevin Feige has so many things that he can do. I'm done. I'd rather see a Toby, a, a, Toby, a, a standalone Tobey Maguire film. I'd rather see a, a standalone Andrew Garfield who is perhaps still probably my favorite Spider-Man. So let's read between the lines here a little bit, because I think there's there's a piece of this that is not being said, but I, I think is really at the root of what's going on. So think about this from Marvel's perspective, where they've had this agreement to share Tom Holland in their stories. If you're Kevin Feige and you're Tom Holland, what's the only thing that they really care about? the fact that they can continue to utilize Spider-Man in their connected universe where they see fit. Meaning, Spider-Man is the only character that really matters to them. The success of his story. But Sony, as we know, is trying to justify the existence of this universe of characters around Spider-Man. And when you look at what No Way Home was about, we have already mined the cinematic history of all of these Spider-Man movies. So you can't do that again. Which means to me, what they think of as a multiverse spectacle, they wanna to use Tom Holland to prop up the failures of Morbius, the upcoming failure of Madam Web, and all and Craven and all these other yeah. characters who they have built out, but the box office has not received well. They want to use Spider-Man as a cheap trick to get people 
to now be interested. That's how I read what they say is a multiverse spectacle, because there's no way that like Kevin Feige is going to lend them his characters Certainly. for that debacle, and it wouldn't make sense anyway, again, with where we left the story. So that's the only conclusion I can come with is they want the three big stars who they probably can get under contract and they want to bring in Jared Leto and hopefully Tom Hardy. That That's what they want to prop up. Good luck. I, I just, I mean, if you can make that Sinister Stick story like believable after the quality of the other non-Spider-Man films we've got, that would be something. But I'd be selling that idea. 100%. Don't we have a better story with Kingpin formulating the Sinister Six? Don't we have a better story of of uh, Tom Holland's char character trying to uh, rekindle that romance with uh, Mary Jane? Listen, I understand what Sony is trying to do, Brian. You said it. You, you said it very specifically of what they're intending to do, and this is and I agree with you. There's also the element of Miles Morales in there that they perhaps want to also take advantage of. I get all that. Brian, I would let them do whatever they want to do and just... I mean, the irony is they have a growing multiverse spectacle and that's into the Spider-Verse, right? That's been very successful and people do respond to that version of multiverse storytelling and we left off that with a cliffhanger, which I think we're excited to see resolve. But... This also falls under the category of the classic cinema mistake. Bigger is not always better. How yeah. many times have we seen this attempted where there's obsession with doing more and putting more and more characters often leads to a counterproductive result? You know, and I, th I think that what's interesting about where we left No Way Home, the most interesting things to me, you hit on it. It's the, re it's, it's the renaissance of these relationships that we've cared about, that now have been reset for everyone except our Spider-Man. That's the interesting thing. It's him and Ned. It's him and Mary J. It's him and MJ. It's yeah. him and all the people who came to know him and Strange, if that's what they want to go. Him and Charlie Kai. But I don't have to sell this, and you know it, because this kind of shit here sells itself. You know, Homecoming was not a grand scale movie. That was 800 plus million. Yeah. Now, Far From Home had a little bit of multiversal crossover, and we were in the, you know, that was coming off of Endgame. That did a billion one. No Way Home did $2 billion. This thing works if you don't mess with the formula. Just take it back to basics. And they left it where this was like the true origin of your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Why do I want to go see? If you want to, if you want to, Sony... If this was, if it, if I wanted to really negotiate with with Sony, I'd be like, okay, let's do this. You want to do that? You first let us tell our story first. You go tell your tell another Andrew Garfield. We'll help you with that too if you want us to help assist in terms of ideas or whatever. Yep. Told him if we're gonna do it, let's do it right. But don't come here and tell me that we're gonna do another movie. Like, absolutely not. It would be the, this would be the jumbo size version of, of Spider-Man 3. It's the exact same thing that happened in the same studio when they had it going great after Doc Ock and Alfred Molina and Spider-Man 2 and they cluttered Spider-Man 3 and people didn't like it. Yeah, it made money, which I guess is all the studio cares about, as we know. But I do sense this competition of like, think about who would be the co-stars in the Marvel version. It's Daredevil. It's yeah. Kingpin. It is Marvel characters, right? There's no room in that that makes sense. Possibly even Fantastic, Fantastic Four with, right. with Johnny Storm, them two being best friends. Marvel characters. That's what Sony can't live with, right? It's Marvel characters are inhabiting that movie except for Spider-Man. Whereas in their version, even if it's clunky, their argument is, hey, we made $2 billion on the last one. Even if we make a billion on this one, that's all good. It's our characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, Brian. I don't think they're going. Sony's going to let this go. Where, I mean, if, what would you do, Brian, in this situation? Because him and Ke Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal are friends, right? I'm pretty sure that they're, they're, they're talking. Well, and... this is a weird, right? That so that you hit on it. The, the, the Reign of the MCU book lays this out really nicely. Spider Man is this weird, almost love triangle 
of studios because it's Kevin Feige and Marvel on one side. Amy Pascal, who used to run Sony but doesn't run it anymore, is still the producer on this one character's franchise. So she has a seat at the table, but she's not actually at Sony. And then there's Sony itself. I think that's kind of how the layout. You have sort of like three different sides in the room who are trying to figure this out. And Tom Holland literally is caught in the middle. He's sort of in contract hell and he doesn't, he can have a voice, but he doesn't really make call the shots. But the, the book also lays out that basically at every turn of this partnership, Sony has constantly tried to kind of go back to its own way. And then they wind up coming to their senses at the last minute and they wind up getting pulled back in. And this even happened on No Way Home. Like Holland actually put out that social media post basically saying he was done that he didn't expect to come back. And then they salvaged the deal. And not only did they salvage the deal, but if you believe the story, Kevin Feige is the one who pushed them to do No Way Home to the scale he did. So I don't know, maybe if that guy says, hey, the right path is to now go smaller for the next one, maybe they ought to listen. But Sony let's, always always seems to just want to be its own hero in this story. That always let's, seems build, to be a hero. let's build this thing up again. Let's let's make some money small. You know, we can but they'll spend... make a lot of money. This yeah. is not this is not we're starting over making cap cap one, two fifty, three hundred million. This movie, if it's comparable to the prior three and it's an R a re origin story, that movie is likely to threaten a billion dollars on its own. What will be the telltale signs of this going in the right direction? Oh, I think you'll know. I mean, if the story, if, again, I think if the rumored stories focus on Marvel, on MCU characters, that would suggest that Marvel is winning the debate. If the rumors more focus on Garfield and Maguire and Tom Hardy, then you know that Sony is basically just going to strong arm this. I just don't see it happening. I don't see Sony giving up what they think is a possible billion dollar movie with the likes of Tom Hardy and his movie coming up soon. These guys are pretty, you know, they're aging out. They they don't, you know, they don't want to wait too long to do it, right? And I have to say, I know you said at the outset, if you're Kevin, just let them go do their thing. Marvel's hand is not quite as strong as it was prior to the no, to the no Way Home negotiation because the rest of the MCU is struggling. Make, don't get it twisted. Like Marvel needs a hit too. We know that. And Spider-Man has been as sure a thing as there. So they do have some incentive to try to make this sort of billion dollar, not lock, but as close to what they have as a lock work, even if they're not getting the full box office take on it. So this will be very interesting because I think both sides do have a lot on the line here. But Marvel, the way Marvel and Kevin and Tom Holland want to go with this is the, I believe, and I think most people will believe is the right way to go. And the, the I believe the, right now, the, the internet fandom consensus is overwhelmingly on the Marvel side. The Madam Web, we already, you already sent me that this is supposed to open lower than Morbius. Yeah. What is there? Like, if I'm sitting in a room with Sony, it's like, Tell me what your plan is, really? Rumored budgets have been like in the 100 to 125, 100 to 150 range for the non-Venom projects. Venom, of course, has been successful and profitable. But even so, you still need, obviously, 250, 300 million to justify those projects. And Morbius didn't get close. Madam Web almost certainly won't get close to that. So, I mean, these projects have been pretty much DOA. And then Craven? I mean, Craven... Like I said, the only thing with Craven that like has me like gives me a modicum of interest is J.C. Chandler, the director, is a very good director, but the trailer didn't really do anything for me to get super yeah. excited. So, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below, guys, what you think about where Spider Man Four may be heading. Do you want Sony's vision to 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 win out the debate for what? kind of story Spider-Man deserves to be uh, 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 shown on screen. If it's Tony, they're thinking about money. If you take them, if you talk, if you're talking about Kevin, you're talking about, he wants to tell a meaningful Spider-Man story, especially where we left off. That is the most intriguing part of it all. Nothing else. Nothing of what Sony's talking about is interesting to me because we've seen it already. They did it. And to attempt to do it again is just 
are like, I don't know. Well, we see it everywhere with franchise films. This is, oh, this is the definition of the law of diminishing marginal returns. This is the definition of what do you say? Squeezing the juice like yeah. out of it. This is that, like what Sony wants to do. But Sony's, I mean, their, their counter would just be, we were at $2 billion. If we take a nice step down, we're still making a lot of money, and we're just going to milk this thing until it's dead. And we don't care yeah. about the there sustainability. We you, don't care. There you That's go. what you're kind of saying. You're going to show up no matter what because it's Spider-Man. Because it's a spectacle. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think of all this. And we'll see you next time on the Energy Report.